I've already compared the M140i to the standard Mark III RS, and that went, well. But how does it fare up against one that's had upwards of 13 grand spent on it? Well, that's what I'm going to find out. No messing around today, let's get straight into it. So James, who has the blue Mark III RS, has a friend called Tom. Tom has a white Mark III RS, but it's um, a little bit different to James's, and I don't just mean the colour. It's got all of the factory options ticked just like Jim's, upgraded Sony stereo with a sub, reverse cam, keyless entry, Shell Recaro seats, blue calipers, door edge protectors, etc, etc, etc. But Tom's car has also had the mount tune treatment, and I don't mean just a gear knob and a rear spoiler, even though it has got a mount tune gear knob and a mount tune rear spoiler. It's basically had the fucking catalogue thrown at it, to be honest. Ah, it's gonna take me ages to edit this, but here it goes. It has an MSD 420 Cobb handset with a revised custom map by MSD, with a save mount tune 375 map on the handset, a Miltec cat back, a mount tune sports cat, mount tune quaff diff, mount tune intercooler, mount tune oil cooler, mount tune radiator, mount tune baffled sum, Mount Tune cast inlet manifold, Mount Tune first and secondary induction pipes, Mount Tune charge pipes, Mount Tune OZ Legera wheels, Mount Tune discs and pads, Mount Tune springs, Mount Tune roll restrictor, and Mount Tune rear lip spoiler. A ghost immobiliser, it's had the roof wrapped in satin black, Mount Tune mats all around, including in the boot, a Mount Tune gear knob, a Mount Tune gear gator, a JCR lowering seat rail for both the passenger and the driver's seat, a Mount Tune PTU brace, a rear RDU cover, and a Mount Tune braided brake lines. Wow, well, that is some spec, and it only costs the same amount as a brand new Skoda Fabia. Absolute bargain, mate. But I'm not here to judge what people spend the disposable income on, I just want to know whether all of that cash has made a noticeable difference or not compared to the standard car. I really hope it has. So we all know by now that the 140 will spank an RS in a straight line, but the RS redeems itself by being an absolute monster through the corners. Surprisingly, sticking a set of firmer lowering springs and painting your tyres on doesn't do the ride any favours at all. I mean, it's ideal for a racetrack, but for potled B roads, it's probably not the best move, and if you've got any fillings, they're gonna get shaken out straight away. But I honestly didn't think there was anything else you could do to the standard RS to improve its handling. However, this one with its quaff diff is just another level. Even over the ups and downs of the moor roads, it felt like it was on rails. As you go over a crest and your stomach's in your mouth, you feel a little bit of torque steer since the wheels are scrambling for traction, but as soon as gravity does its thing and it refines its grip, it just squats and gets the power down and then shoots you towards the next corner. Yeah, hands down, it is far better than any one series or any other hot hatch for that matter. Now with Tom's RS having an MSD map, it's actually up the power from 350 brake to 420, and that's tweaked pretty much as far as it can go on standard internal, so I'm told. In a straight line, it really is so hard to tell which one's quicker now, but I think the 140 still pips it, which is absolutely balmy when you think about it, because if we go off the figures in the book, it should have 85 less ponies under the bonnet. Now I'm taking my car to the dyno within the next few weeks or so to finally verify what the actual figures are standard. I'm hoping for around the 350 mark, but that's still a fair old chunk of 420, and I think that just highlights how good the ZF transmission is in the 140. Just a quick intermission before I move on, I've got a couple of exhaust clips now, so we can have a good old fashioned rev off. Let me know which one you think sounds better. <laughs> either blue or white down below to cast your vote. Now, back to the actual video. If you've ever had a go in a standard RS, you'll know that they're not made for grand touring. Anything more than a couple of hours in those lovely Recaro seats and your back is going to be like mincemeat. Put it this way, when you're sitting in the cab of a pretty heavily modified RS, you can tell you're sitting in the cab of a pretty heavily modified RS. Whereas if you were to jump in a 140 with the same sort of spec list, you'd feel like you were just sat in a regular 1 series. And I totally get that some people want to feel like they're on the front row of the grid of the BTCC. And if that appeals to you, then the RS is definitely the right car for you. But if you're wanting a comfortable daily driver that you can occasionally tickle the tits off and drive to Neverland and back without seriously damaging your spinal cord, then you might want to stick in the 1 series. After all that, then you're probably thinking, do you actually like Tom's car, Luke? Fucking right I do. I'm just trying to be as honest and unbiased as I can be. It goes like shit off a shovel, handles better than anything else this shape, and if anyone out there wants to give me theirs, I'll quite happily take it off the run for free. And there's no doubt that the RS is the better investment too. 
I've never quite fully understood the reason behind certain Fords holding the value so well. I mean, they're a mass-produced car and the build quality isn't the greatest, but I suppose you could say the same thing about Jap cars. Supras are demanding silly money now, and more recently, S15 prices have started to skyrocket as well. Would I buy one and then bolt 13k worth of mods to it to make it marginally better in certain areas? Nah. Nah, I wouldn't. A couple of grand, sure. I mean, that's probably what I've spent on any car I've ever had, to be honest, but 13k is a little bit excessive in my eyes, especially when the standard car is really good. But it's not my car, is it? He can do whatever he likes, and I respect him all the more for doing it. And in all honesty, if I had to choose to take either car to a track to give it a good hiding, I'd pick his RS all day long. I can't help but think what kind of monster you'd end up if you spent 13 grand on a 140, though. That's a different breed of motor altogether. It wouldn't just be knocking on the doors of the hyper hatches, it'd be kicking the bastard through. But you'd still have people saying that you can't afford an M car, so you're probably just better off buying an M3 with the money instead to keep the trolls happy. No matter how much money you throw at the Focus' interior though, it still looks dog shit. The phrase you can't polish a turd but you can roll it in glitter is very poignant in this case. Please Ford, just do better next time, it's so frustrating. And on that note, I think I'm going to scarper. I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Like I said, I've got a few things lined up for the 140 over the next few weeks, so if you want to see what I'm doing, you can always subscribe so you don't miss out. As always, I'll link my socials down in the description if you want to see what I'm up to before a video is released, and that's about it for now, so I'll see you in the next one. Bye!